Band is full of awkward people, and I am no exception to that. Because today I'm back with another top 10 personal true awkward band stories. Except for one of them. One of these stories is a fake story that I'm gonna make up, and it's up to you to decide which one it is. We were at DCA Finals in Rochester, New York at the rehearsal site, you know, it was a normal day, everything was going fine until it got awkward real fast. Out of nowhere, this crazy dude just comes out of the woods and just starts terrorizing everyone trying to rehearse. And uh, yeah, we had to stop rehearsal and get everyone away from him. One of the drum techs grabbed his baseball bat and was like shielding everyone back to try to keep us all safe. It was nuts. So yeah, we called the cops and the cops eventually got there and they chased him back into the woods, never to be seen again. Until like two minutes later, they arrested him and took him away. And that was really random and really weird and really awkward and really scary. And possibly also really fake, because remember, one of these stories is fake. Tony G and I were in our super senior year of college because, you know, music majors. And we decided to do an absolutely epic duet, an arrangement of the song Comedian's Gallop on timpani. Yeah, this was insanely hard because there's a lot of different pitches in Comedian's Gallop. And for those of you who don't know much about timpani, changing the notes on a timpani can be extremely difficult, especially when you have to do it a lot. But we practiced this for a really long time and we got pretty darn good at it and we were set to play it in master class for the entire percussion studio. So we showed up to the master class, we start getting the timpani set up, and that's when I realized that the professor had changed the heads on the set of timpani that I was using that morning. So once again, for those of you who don't know about timpani, when you change the heads on a timpani, that completely screws up all the tuning changes. I was totally screwed now, because the gauges that show the pitches, they were not set to the right pitches anymore, and also the muscle memory I worked out using the foot pedals to get those pitches was totally shot. It's a completely different set of notes based Based on where the pedal is now. So we start playing this freaking thing and it was hot garbage dude. I was all over the place with these notes. And I mean, we could have kept working on it and performed it again the next week or something, but I don't know, we just didn't feel like it. So that was unfortunately the one and only public performance of Comedian's Gallop timpani arrangement and it was awful. Unless the story was fake, that means that it never happened. Okay, another college story here. I was working on Bach Cello Suite number two, but not playing it on cello, playing it on marimba. And I've been working on it for a while and I was prepared to play it in rep class that day for the entire studio. And on the lesson right before the rep class, uh, the professor told me that I should probably memorize it because I was reading the music, but I kind of didn't need to, it was sort of memorized. So I decided to work on it a little more and get that thing memorized. So rep class day came and I got on the marimba with no sheet music because who needs that? <laughs> I start playing it, it's going fine, get a few bars in, and oh crap, I freaking forgot something. Uh, so I just kind of made something up, and it's okay, this, this happens sometimes, you know, you're gonna make mistakes, as I said in the last story. The most important thing is how you recover, so I was lost, not knowing what I was doing, but I was still going, and just needed to, you know, get back into it. And I was still going, and dude, I, I just could not remember anything in the solo that I could jump back into. I was, dude, I was totally freestyling this Bach cello suite. And then eventually, I think the whole thing was like four minutes long. Around the four minute mark, I started remembering how the ending went. So I just jumped into the very end, like the last few bars, and ended it. So yeah, I BS'd like 95% of a Bach cello suite. I stayed in D minor though, which definitely helped a lot because literally nobody there knew that I made up most of it. But yeah, I got a whole bunch of positive comments from everyone in the studio about how good it was. That taught me a very valuable lesson in life, to fake it until you make it. Just like this story, I could be faking it, and now I'm making it. This next story is a super throwback all the way to fifth grade elementary school band. 
A small group of like 10 of us were selected to perform at this live recording for the local public access channel. Now this was a big break for me at 11 years old, okay? I'd be playing in front of tens of people live in the studio and probably single digits of people watching at home. Now the way this was gonna work is the band director, they were gonna be at the performance, but they weren't gonna do any conducting, okay? We were just gonna, you know, count the songs off ourselves and run through them. And I mean, the songs we were playing we're only like eight bars long, but still, that's kind of impressive for a bunch of 11-year-olds to get through the songs all by themselves. So we start going and we play through the first song, Absolutely Nailed It. So then it was time to do the second song and I was switching over from the snare drum to bass drum and this freaking kid that was counting us off just starts counting off before I was ready. I missed like two measures of music and I was freaking out, dude. 11 year old me needed to play those measures. It's probably like a few quarter notes, but still, I wanted to nail all the parts. So then that song ended and the dude starts counting off again before I'm back on wait, the snare wait, drum. Wait, one, two, let's stop. <gasps> That's it, the world was about to end. I had played a random note when nobody else played. This guy's making all sorts of mistakes over there. <laughs> So we ended up playing through that song and it went fine because, you know, then I was ready. But, oh man, all those mistakes I made in the middle of the concert it felt terrible. But after the concert, I was surprised. The band director said we all did a great job. My parents said I did a great job. Everyone thought we did great, even though I knew I did horrible. Yep, that was a pretty terrible experience, unless I am making it up because one of these stories is fake. <laughs> My freshman year of high school marching band, I was on the snare drum, and our marching band was pretty freaking terrible this year. We were learning our closing movement to the show like halfway into the competitive season, which is super late to be learning new music. And yeah, we got the drum feature the day of our home show competition, and learned it, and it was really terrible, and people were like forgetting the music when we were trying to practice it, but we were gonna do it in the show that night, in front of all our friends and all our family. And dude, I was freaking out about this because I like could not get a single rep in where I played the whole part correctly. So between the time of that rehearsal and our show, I like practiced the part over and over and over in an attempt to memorize it. And finally we get to the home show performance and the audience is packed full of all the parents and friends and all the other bands that already performed are back in there watching us. And we get to that drum feature and I forgot the music immediately along with every single other person in the drum line. Yeah, that crap was super embarrassing embarrassing and I felt terrible about myself. But just like most of these stories, it turned out to be not quite as bad as I thought because my dad filmed it from the stands and I watched the video later that night and most of that dirt was covered up by the front ensemble playing a bunch of cymbal crashes and swells and stuff. Uh, I think the drum techs added those in just to hide all the crap that was going on. So yep, some good old creative writing to hide <laughs> was terrible. Just like I might be hiding the truth with this story, it could be fake. <laughs> The United States Marine Corps Drum and Bugle Corps was where I marched for four years, and I was on a whole bunch of different instruments when I was there, but this story is about when I was on the synth. So we were performing a few shows down in Texas, and this particular show was outside of the Alamo. Do you remember the Alamo? Well, I remember the awkwardness of this performance. This was uh, really, really weird. So in this show, there was a synthesizer sampled solo that was like 30 seconds long. It was this transition between movements. And when we were doing it with drill, there was visual stuff marching going on, but uh, this show it was just a standstill performance. So we got set up for the show. I got the synth all plugged in, started testing things out and nothing worked. Oh, synth player problems, am I right? So I'm scrambling around trying to get all the electronics to work and they had to start the show because uh, everyone was waiting so they started up. So then we get to that synthesizer solo and it was just 30 seconds of awkward silence with the drum major conducting. Cause yeah, we couldn't just skip that part because there were counts written to it and everyone knew how to get from one section to the other based on the counts. So we had to count through it silently, awkwardly. And I never figured out why the synth didn't work. I mean, I tried everything I could and couldn't figure it out. But after exhausting all the options to figure it out, I did a great job just standing there awkwardly. The synthesizer is such an awkward instrument that I got two stories out of it, even though I played it for one show. 
So this time we were performing a show in a high school stadium and we get there, the synth is actually working this time, thank goodness, and we get going and immediately I think something's wrong, like something just doesn't sound right, but I can't put my finger on it. So I just keep playing for about a minute and 30 seconds trying to figure out what sounded so off and then I realized that the synth was like mad out of tune. I stopped playing for a little bit and checked all the settings on the synth in the main stage program and nothing seemed to be wrong, so I just stood there awkwardly not playing. Except for some of the samples that were not tuned, okay, Th those worked. Afterwards, I like did like a deep dive into all of the settings on main stage. Somehow, the pitch got shifted up a half step, so everything that I was playing was a half step too high. So yeah, synth was a very interesting experience because there was a lot of times where stuff didn't work and it ended up being pretty awkward. Unless it wasn't. Unless those stories could be fake. Well, only one story's fake, okay? One of the synthesizer stories at least has to be true. One more Marine Corps story, this time I was on drum sets. So we were doing a performance at the Marine Corps Memorial, and this was around that time when all of those cicada bug things, like, were coming out in droves and just infesting the whole place, and they were, dude, they were all over this area. It was terrible. During this whole performance, they were, like, whizzing by and whatever, you know, it was pretty annoying, but, you know, we kept playing on, until I had one cicada just land directly on my mouth. It was very disgusting. But all my military training had taught me to remain calm in stressful situations, so that's what I did. I just kept playing while this thing was chilling on my mouth. So after like 10 to 15 seconds, I decided, okay, I gotta get this thing off of me, but I didn't have any rest in the music, like, I just played through the whole time and couldn't stop playing. So I decided that what I was gonna do, I was just gonna huff and puff and blow this freaking cicada off, and it would fly away. So that's what I tried to do. I gave it a blow and it went inside my mouth at this point and dude, I freaked out. I freaked the heck out, all right? My military training did not prepare me for this moment. Yeah, I totally blew up the part on the drum set and kind of threw everyone in the ensemble off because I'm the timekeeping device, but we got back on shortly after that. And it was definitely a very uncomfortable and awkward experience, unless I'm lying about it. <laughs> All Eastern Honors Ensemble in high school. So there we were, all the top honors band students on our weekend retreat to Connecticut. And the band director decided that during the rehearsal time we would also introduce all of ourselves individually and give a fun fact about our lives. And I was ready for this moment, okay? Every time I have to give some fun fact in class, I always had my go-to, which was that my favorite movie is The Brave Little Toaster. So we went around the room giving fun facts, and some people just didn't have any facts because they're awkward. Dad, I'm so awkward! And other people just had, like, really lame fun facts. And my fun fact is that my grandparents, they're, like, super old. It's crazy. And then we get to this one guy. My fun fact is that I have three testicles. Yeah, few people laughed out of just complete discomfort, but dude, this was super personal. It's just really weird to be telling everyone that. And yeah, that guy creeped everyone out and nobody sat with him at lunch. But then I was the very next one to go after him. And my fun fact is, apparently I know a guy who has three testicles. <laughs> See, I'm not the awkward person in all of these stories, all right? For this one, that was actually a good recovery and made a lot of people in the room laugh. I didn't get to give my brave little toaster fact, but I thought that was a good recovery and was definitely way funnier. Which was good because this guy made everyone very uncomfortable. And it turns out this guy was lying. Like, he didn't actually have a third passenger in the old sack, all right? He made that up, I guess, to try to be funny, but he wasn't. Unless that never happened. It could be a lie about a lie. Ooh, that's deep. Freshman year, indoor percussion. A lot of awkward stuff happened when I was a freshman. Seems about right. So our theme was about water and our staff decided that we should march barefoot because, you know, thematic purposes. So what we would do at all these shows, I mean, you can't be walking around barefoot the whole time, so we would wear our shoes up till we got to the performance area and then right outside the gym we would take our shoes off, leave them there, go perform the show, and then afterwards we'd come back and put our shoes back on. So that's what we did, everything went fine and we got done the show and then we came back to get our shoes and then a bunch of us realized that 
our socks were missing out of our shoes. Yeah, during like the 10 minutes that we were in the gym, somebody came by and stole a bunch of high school kids' socks and <laughs> left with them. Oh, that's uh, very gross and creepy. And also very mildly inconvenient because we had to walk around with shoes without socks on the rest of the day. Unless the story's fake, then it's okay. It's all right. All good. Compose a comment with which of those 10 stories you think was the fake one. Make sure you check out this video for more awkward band moments. And have a good morning.